Elizabeth Perry? Do I know you? Sal, you answered my ad, right? Sorry, I was expecting someone a little bit taller. Yeah, I get that a lot. There is no guy who's single, straight, good looking, and lives in New York City. In the words of Jane Austen, it is a truth universally acknowledged. Three hot sisters will not stay single for long. Girls, meet your new tenant. And his friend, George Barrow. How is your plan coming along to turn the West Village into a uh, hedge funder's Disneyland? Very well. Thank you. You're still the Prince Charming of West Village real estate. <sighs> Any girl would pay gold just to meet you for a cup of coffee. You are a world-class creep. Now get out! Not everyone is looking for a Mr. Darcy with marriage and happily ever after. Oh my God, who are you? George Barrow? <laughs> I mean, I guess I am partial to dormer windows. Just one more townhouse owned by three sisters. We don't want to sell. I thought you hated him and everything he stood for. You can't expect for me to sit around and wait for you to show up and fix what's wrong down there. In the garden apartment. He's a real gentleman who's kind and shares my passion for dormer windows. You have no idea who George Barrow is. So enlighten me. I had no idea that George Barrow was such a monster. <laughs> Someone stole the checkbook for our credit line. That means we have seven days to come up with a hundred thousand no! dollars. What could George Barrow possibly want with me? The only bank that's willing to give you a bridge loan is the Hutchinson River Bank. I thought they were a front for the Russian mob. Why would George Barrow borrow money from the mob? He isn't who you think he is. Maybe life isn't about getting what you want. It's about wanting what you get. Who's getting the money, George? Hey! Do you have any idea how hard it is for a woman over 30 to find a single straight man south of 14th Street? The way your nails felt on my back, the way your lips felt on my... Oh, hey, PG-13, we have customers. You're my hero, Liz Perry. Well, let's just say I'm a woman of many talents. All's well that ends well, and all that crap. Samantha Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Townhouse Confidential coming out video on demand January 31st. We just checked out highlights of the trailer. We had a chance to chat with the filmmakers, Patrick and Rosalind. And man, this is one fun romantic comedy that doesn't just involve the pitfalls of online dating today, but also the never ending issue of real estate, hedge funds and all that jazz. And it kind of marries the two together and kind of a, a perfect blend. How did you two get involved with this film? First got the audition from my manager. Um, he sent it over. And I read the breakdown and the scene and was like, oh my God, the audition scene was the cupcake scene, which if you haven't seen the film, it's an iconic, you know, scene. Um, and I read the screen, the, the scene and was like, oh my God, this is so funny. I'm so excited to audition for it. And then from there, I think it was two callbacks and a chem read or something like that. It was like, there were a couple other, you know, processes to go through, um, but it was fun from start to finish, I'll say. Yeah, it was, it was about the same for me. I mean, I, I think it was all one week of, uh, you know, I think I taped a, taped a first round on like a Monday, heard back about a callback within a 48 hours. We got, um, you know, did a live callback. I don't know if we were on the first round together or not. On like Friday, I want to say. And then Saturday was second round. Uh, and then got a call from Patrick, our director, a couple hours later. And um, so, yeah, it was a really nice week. I remember it was 4th of July weekend, going into 4th of July weekend of 2021. And so finding out on the 3rd that I booked it and then going to all the 4th of July parties was, it was good. It was like most cathartic fireworks in uh uh, at least a, a few years at that point. That's for sure. Yeah, and, and you two did a great job. And in speaking to the filmmakers, they were telling me that as far as getting everybody in, in the same room at the same time, it, it wasn't easy, especially, you know, because with the pandemic still going on and, and everything else. So you two had great chemistry on screen, but how much actual time did you have together in person before you started rolling? Uh, Lee and I had, what, coffee date? And then that we, like, ran lines. Um, yeah. And we had a table read that was with everybody who could be present in New York for maybe another like two hours or so. Yeah, very minimal. I mean, we it was a quick process because like, you know, we the cast came together in early July. Uh, I mean, 
probably by mid July is when the full cast was, was put together. And then we were shooting by the first week of August. So it was like really fast. Sam and I lived close together. So we ran those lines and then, um, yeah, so just a couple times. Yeah. We had that, that group read, we had a couple costume fittings maybe. And then, um, and then it was like, yeah, Sam, you were on set for a couple of days before I showed up, I think. And then yeah. I know my first scene was that fireplace sequence yeah, where it was great. like one long take. Um, that was my first sh- scene. Um, and I think we I think we pulled it off. That's one of my favorite scenes in the film. And uh, I know some people have enjoyed it just because it stands out as like not being full of cuts. And it's just kind of like plays out. But yeah, to have that be day one with a working fireplace was a little intimidating, but you know, we we had fun with it. I'm glad we at least got a few hours to like, you know, hang out before the first day. What's been the biggest takeaways for for you two during this whole period from like 2020 to present? Is it the you know, the whole adjusting on the fly? Are, are there some things that you two learned about each other and 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 yourselves as actors during the whole process of this film and just really in the crazy time we're in? Yeah, definitely with the audition process. I mean, it was it was the first film I've joined where like I hadn't met anyone in person first. I mean, I I know self tapes have been a thing for a while, obviously, at least for the first round, but you know, and you know, pre COVID, there would always be then like at some point in the callbacks, you'd go in person and do some reads in person. And, uh, you know, Sam and I have talked about this a little, it's like, you want to be able to show a director that you can take direction in the moment and, you know, give it another shot. Um, the downsides of it being a fully virtual realm is it, you know, you don't get that opportunity to feel the chemistry with the creators in person. And, and um, it's a whole different skill set to be able to like, you know, both rounds of callbacks being on Zoom, you know, it's like, okay, whereas before my training is like, how do I relax my body to be at ease in this room with these people in person? But now it's like, how do I adjust the script on my screen so that it's near the lens so that I'm looking correctly. It's like this whole other layer of uh, digital skill sets that's required. And I mean, certainly, you know, when we were shooting it, it was right at the height of the like Delta wave of summer 21. And so we were all super cautious with everything. And, um, you know, I felt always like I was trying to catch up to just, you know, make sure I was on top of, you know, knowing how to audition on, on, on a lens on zoom only. Um, so I, I, I found it challenging, but I mean, you know, besides masks and testing and everything, once we're on set, it was just a set, you know, it, I mean, the extra precautions, you know, put, you know, a few extra roadblocks in the way of things, but you know, at the end of the day, we were on set having fun making a movie just like it was 2019, but with masks on in between. You know? <laughs> yeah. I would say the biggest hurdle is sort of what Lee was saying with not getting anything from the creatives in the room. When you get a script as an actor, sometimes you don't get the full script. Um, Like we didn't get the full townhouse confidential script until much later. So when you're seeing these scenes in piecemeal, it's like, okay, where is my character coming from? Where are they going to? What is the history? What just happened with these two folks? And you're kind of creating that in a bit of a bubble um, and hoping like, you know, for lack of a better metaphor, throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks um, and making these big choices by yourself, you know, you're who's ever can be in the room reading with you or on Zoom and, you know, things like that. So it adds a different layer to it for sure. And learning how to just trust your natural instincts instead of being like, oh, I'll just ask them a question in the room because you don't have that li- that luxury anymore with self-taping. Um, mm-hmm. My favorite part of the Zoom callback process was, Lee, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but after we did our last round together, he made me so angry, like in real, like it's a scene where I actually get mad at him and I got so angry and they were like, Sam, you're released. And I was like, great, thank you so much. And I slammed my laptop closed and I just went, oh, he infuriates me. <laughs> like, I hope we both put it, book it because like that is exactly like the feeling you should have of like, oh my God. Um and it was similar to being in the room, you know, of, of feeling these like emotions in real time. Um, 
the worries for me are usually technical of like, I live in an apartment in Brooklyn. I have a dog. He tends to bark anytime he pleases it, you know? So it's, he'll be quiet up until I press go. And then he's, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely just learning to trust yourself, your instrument and the process a little bit more. I'm really glad to know that I made you that angry. You made That's, me so uh, mad. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. It was the confrontation with the like, uh, why haven't you fixed all this stuff electrical outlets type of thing and uh yeah well that's good that's good i mean that is a big difference too you're doing a live callback on zoom and like if you're in person you know maybe you get to kind of like go out with the actor in the hallway be like oh wow you know pat on the back like hey hey, you know we're just people but at the end of that one you're infuriated with your closed laptop by yourself in a room it's like (laughs) where do i put this energy you know (laughs) You mentioned being in an apartment in Brooklyn and, you know, it's obviously New York is very loud and you have your dog. I have two cats and I can't control them sometimes either. Now, factor that in with you two filming on location, pretty much the entire film in New York, whether it be in you know the writer Rosalind's you know, townhouses or somewhere in one of these you know iconic local businesses in New York. You know, how was it dealing with that and everything with the noise, with the different elements, especially with not to give too much away, but there was a rooftop scene from I understand that was particularly challenging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the Magnolia Bakery shoot day was it's a beautiful set of shots um, and like was amazing to work on and film and location, but it was an overnight shoot due to the bakery, just like needing to be a bakery, you know? (laughs) Um, So my first like truly overnight 12 hour shoot day um, ever in my career. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's hard in a different way because when everyone's, you know, my boyfriend was leaving or coming home and I was leaving, I was like, see you later at 9am when I'm done. Um, And staying up, but also present to be, you know, on camera, like that was super hard. Um, there was also a day where someone was running down the street in front of Rosalind's house. Someone had stolen this girl's phone and she was like running after him asking for help to like get her cell phone back. And the director and the DP like ran outside to go help this woman. And I, I don't know how, like things escalated, trash cans were thrown. Like, I'm not really sure. Um, but it was just like one of those moments where we're like, yeah, we're making a movie in New York and that's crime. <laughs> and like, it's happening right outside. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That was an insane day. I mean, we went straight from, it was like, yeah, our like key grip and DP. Yeah. They like ambushed this guy who'd stolen this lady's phone. And it was, it was a whole thing. I I mean, some of the, there was a real police encounter happening outside at the diner where in the movie you can see like some red and some flashing cop cars and stuff. And there was a whole situation happening outside. And I had to like be out there around that and enter into the scene for multiple takes and like watch this really tense situation develop. And like, I wanted to see what was happening. And I came into that scene with that energy where it was like, you know, responding to a real life, difficult situation was happening and then bringing that into a fictional encounter where it was supposed to be tense and it was like well what do i have these are the ingredients the universe has given me for this moment and uh i'm just gonna ride that um speaking of that overnight shoot though i was supposed to show up for like a brief shot i didn't have a line um and i realized that I'd have to be there for the whole overnight shoot <laughs> just to have this one little moment of me like by a wall like watching it and I'm like, you know, do we really need this moment? They're like, that's eh, okay. I'm like, Ugh! I got an extra night of sleep because uh, that, <laughs> that was a long one. Um, but you had mentioned uh, the the rooftop. That was, um, you know, surprisingly, surprisingly smooth. We had a huge crane that went up like, you know, five stories to shoot um, us from like across the street. And um, it was fairly smooth my problem though was that i don't feel like i was i had warmed up properly we had to do a bunch of yelling and uh i basically lost my voice uh at some point i had i didn't have covid but i had some kind of throat thing and uh when we went to shoot the like party scene the next day which was in the club that happens earlier in the movie where we're all right at this bar um, I could barely speak like my I felt OK, but my voice just 
was literally disappearing. And I sounded like Vito Corleone. It was, it was ridiculous. And so all that audio, that dialogue is AVR from later that we, we pasted in. I hope I'm not, uh, some movie secrets should stay secret, but it was just, uh, <laughs> it was a well-edited um, fixeroo. So we, we had a few little hiccups there, but I don't know, for the most part, it was pretty smooth. Awesome. Well, Townhouse Confidential, as I mentioned, comes out video on demand January 31st. At the time we're recording this, this weekend for one week only, it'll be playing at Village East in New York City. But before we let you two go, we always like to ask our guests some random and rapid fire questions just to get to know you two better. Are you ready? Yes, bring it. (laughs) All right. Favorite cheat meal or late night snack? Cheat meal? I don't eat gluten or dairy anymore. So like that sucks to be me. Um, but I would say I, the modern bread and bagel. See, I don't really live with enough rules, so nothing feels like cheating because everything is, there's just nothing to break. (laughs) You know what I mean? What are your favorite spots in New York? Could be a favorite landmark, could be like a favorite restaurant, hole in the wall. Like what's kind of like your, your go-to place. If I'm going there and it's not like something touristy, like where would you take? It's Washington Square Park for me. I mean, it's always been that way since I first visited the city in 2006. Um, fell in love with that spot. I think it still retains the unexpected chaotic qualities that make New York great. You see so much great music and art and skateboarding and weirdness. Uh, and we shot our most of our film like a block away. So it was like felt like a real full circle moment for me personally. So yeah, if I ever am with a tourist or someone who's never been here, Washington Square Park is always on that walk for sure. Yeah. Um, well, if you come to Brooklyn, um, there's a taco truck restaurant. It's like a taco truck parked in a lot with a bar called Chillos. Tacos ever. So like, that's my restaurant of choice. Um, and then actually we found it during filming or I'd never been until filming. Uh, kettle of fish this uh like all cash bar in like right across from uh washington square park and like right over there so that that was cool and uh a fun find that i now go to often (laughs) yeah but you know they had a fire there and it's like (gasps) closed right now the duplex it's right next to the duplex bar and kettle of fish and i i haven't been able to go back i i might be behind the times maybe they've reopened but uh like i'm rooting for them to return great great spot kettle of fish like I'm praying for them. Yeah, we we definitely wish them the best. Now, you two were fantastic characters. Of course, you played George Barrow. Sam, you played Liz Perry. Who are your favorite characters in Townhouse Confidential besides yourselves? Well, you know, I got a, I had a few scenes with the um, both the Sal's a lot, and those guys together, uh, Joe D'Onofrio and Al Linnea, really, um, you know, cracked me up repeatedly, especially when we were at that pizza restaurant. Um, there was just all kinds of hijinks taking place, and uh, you know, one on one, either of them is uh, is a great time, but together they really are like uh, uh, a nonstop comedy routine. So uh, they always made the set life uh, a little bit more sparkly and delightful. So uh, I'll give it to the Sal's. <laughs> I would say uh, Mr. Jonas, who plays Tommy Leroy. He was another one that during the callback process, he made just such a fun choice that was like gross, but also like totally fit the character. And I was like, oh my God, I, yeah, I'm obsessed with you. Like, this is awesome. Because um, it was just such a cool acting choice that I was like, what? Oh my God. Um, and then he's just like such a great human being and so funny. His laugh in the movie is his laugh in real life, which like, will literally just like make everyone around him crack up. Um, and then I'd also give shout outs to my on-screen sisters um, played by Brittany and Allison. Um, they are just two of the sweetest people on the entire planet. So no matter what we were shooting and their characters are fun in their own regards, uh, like Brittany's being, you know, a little, she goes out a lot and Allie's never goes out at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> they always made the the set so warm. Um, and yeah, we're like real tight in real life, which is great. I have two new sisters. I have a real sister. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Good choices. Yeah. Your, your secret is, is safe. Now, Sam, I got to also ask you, and I think this was in one of the promotional clips. There's a scene where you and Tommy, it is Tommy, right? The handyman. 
and yeah. and it's kind of kind of sensual when it's going in one direction it goes another way and it involves you looking uh well guys you two both licking cupcakes very passionately i'm wondering how many takes did that well take because i, I can't imagine keeping a, a straight face doing that oh yeah that was a hard one to film uh i think we got that like three takes mostly because we'd mess up like my makeup would be bloop, up my face <laughs> Um, so I think we got it in three, um, but it was, as soon as the cameras cut, we both would die, like crack up laughing. It was so fun for both of us. <laughs> yeah. That was Without that. gluten-free, it was gluten-free though, right? It was a gluten-free, dairy-free cupcake because I would not, I would be in a really bad, bad place if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. There you go. Did, did a little bit of a quick IMDb research on you two. So I got to ask completely objective question, of course. Uh, what's a better university, Michigan or Columbia? Ooh, baby, go blue. Go blue. I mean, I mean we're also blue. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. So wait, we can say blue and, and still be on the same team. Um, yeah, we're uh, look, we're I'm I'm from Michigan. Sam's from Jersey, New York, Columbia. It's like, you know, we're representing there. I think uh, Michigan had uh, a lot going for it in terms of like having that Big Ten thing, but also having a small acting conservatory. So I feel like I got the best of two different types of college experience at once. So I don't know what it was like at Columbia, but, um, you know, I got to... uh, you know, look, look, I, I was about to go. I was about to say I got to see like cool shows in Detroit, but I'm talking to someone who went to college in New York City. I'm like, what am I supposed <laughs> to do? I mean, look, I love Ann Arbor. I love Detroit. But like, I mean, what am I going to how am I going to compare? Columbia, I think, wins. Um, <laughs> no, it was a great, a great experience. And just like a beautiful campus. Like this time they the main like strip, they just put like lights up. And when it snows, it's just like picture perfect over there. Um, but I mean, Lee, where did George Barrow go to school? God, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I wear, I literally wore <laughs> a Columbia T-shirt at, at some point in the film, so I may be fighting <laughs> against myself here. Um, so, hey, whatever. I'll give it to Columbia today, just uh, for townhouse's sake. But in my um, in my heart, I'm bleeding maize and blue. Why should people watch Townhouse Confidential? Because it's a lighthearted jaunt. In such times as we live, there is a need for um, lightness and um, joviality amidst the, you know, very important conversations happening in society. And like, personally, I gravitate toward, you know, heavy issues very naturally and like really always want to put myself into like, you know, the center of really hard conversations and, um, you know, for what I for what I would think are good reasons and you know, I have so much respect for so many films these days that are, you know, fighting the good fight and having asking new questions and delivering new answers. And, um, you know, it was kind of interesting to be making like a very silly rom-com uh, while, you know, outside of the set, I was thinking about very different things. And, you know, uh, I've come around to just the notion of just, you know, giving more space for laughter in my life and like, you know, putting down the heavy bags for a second. So, you know, the acting is great. The writing is really fun. And um, I think that there's just a lot to be said for um, giggling in the midst of uh, the storm sometimes. Um, I would say as a, I'm from Long Island originally and then moved to the UK for a few years and then Jersey. So I've like been always around New York minus my time in the UK. I would walk, you know, the West Village and be so jealous of these people who had these townhouses. And it was like, oh, my God, like they must be super, super wealthy. So to step into the shoes of Liz Perry, where it's like she inherits this house that's falling apart around her and they can't get rid of it. But they want to kind of, but they don't because it's also their parents and there's feelings in there and all of that. That was really real to me and made the people of the West Village real people instead of like, oh, super celebrities that live and and own these homes where it's like no there's not they still have the same problems of like there might be a really big roach in the basement or you know whatever the case may be that really grounds it in the reality of these characters yes they're going through these like larger than life type 
feelings and emotions and events that are happening, but at the core, they're real people going through real things. And I love that. Um, and I'm also a sucker for a happy ending. Like, yes, girl, get your Prince Charming. <laughs> um, I was a Disney kid. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite movie. So like, get you, you know, do do that thing. Um, and I love that this has a happy ending for most of the characters have a happy ending. It's- yeah, this is definitely a movie that on VHS would have come in one of those like old Disney, like plastic uh, crunchy boxes. Like, I could really see it sitting next to like Lady in the Tramp and Beauty and the Beast or something like that. Awesome. Well, Samantha Lee, I really do appreciate the time. Before we let you go, where can we find you two online and where can we find you next? Samantha Nicole Simone.com. Well, I'm heading to Sundance Film Festival for, uh, I teach as well. So one of my clients is in um, one of the movies out there. So I'm really excited about that while this is going on. Um, and then, yeah, right now, just auditioning and and putting as much work out there as I can and hoping for hoping for some positive waves coming in 2023. Yeah, definitely into the approaching waves myself. Um, I uh, have a short film that's about to hit picture lock called female narrative. It's a, it's a brief short film um, made by uh, my dear friend, Isabel Monk Cade. Um, uh, her and I accident, she wrote it. Our great director, Matthew Lejeune is a really, a really talented dude. And uh, we're hoping to submit that around shortly. Um, also auditioning. Uh, yeah. I'm on Instagram at Lee Tyler C. Uh, that's a S E E at the end. And um yeah, I got a basic website out there. I'm not really on TikTok either. Uh, not super into Facebook either, but uh, you can find me. Yeah, I'm bouncing around. Great. Well, hey, look up Samantha Simone, Lee Tyler. We'll find you. And of course, you can find them in Townhouse Confidential coming out January 31st, video on demand.